Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to know about the Hisense U6HF. This is a Amazon Fire branded television, it has the voice remote control so it will connect to all your Alexa devices. In addition to that, this TV is a Dolby Vision television, has Dolby Outmost pass-through, and it uses the Hisense ULED technology. Now, just in case you missed it, I did do an unboxing video, which I'll leave the link in the description below, but that video is going to show you guys what everything comes with it in the box and all that good stuff. Now, jumping right into the details, you can see on the top of this TV from the back view, it has a painted finish, and on the bottom is more texture, but it does have screw holes, so you can mount it on a wall. Looking at this TV from the side view, you can see that it is a little bit thicker, and it's because of the direct backlights to support the full array local dimming. On the left side, you're going to find your traditional power cord input. And on the right side, you're going to find all your inputs, including an ATSC tuner, an AV input with adapter so you can plug in your older VCR components. There's four HDMIs, and all of them are 60 hertz, and there's one for eARC. There's also a USB. And then on the very back, we have a LAN connection for connecting to a router, a fiber optic output, and yes, this one does have a headphone output. Now, in my opinion, this TV has a nice, clean look to it. The bezels are very thin. It goes around the edges. The feet are made out of metal. They have a little bit of wire maintenance in the back of them. And then when it comes to the Hisense logo here in the center, behind it, there's a press button. And if you press on it, you can switch through all your inputs, but you can't change the applications or anything like that. There's a Fire TV logo in the corner. And it also supports your Dolby Vision HDR, your HDR10, and HDR10+, Plus which is really backed by Samsung and Panasonic. So a lot of manufacturers don't even include that, but Hisense is supporting that. Now let's take a look at some different test patterns to see how well the television performs. The first thing I did is some contrast tests on this television, and I can tell you that the black levels were decent, but you can see the backlights bleeding in a little bit. It also has really good grayscale, as you can see right here. And then I went over to motion test, and I think it's doing a really good job, consider it does have a motion rate of 240. You would notice a little bit of vignetting around the edges if you was watching an all white scene, but this is a very rare occurrence. And I also went to check out the blooming, and you can see that it is picking up some of the backlights, even though it does have the full ray local dimming. And I would tell you that this TV looks beautiful with HDR content. You can see, compared to the SDR, it's going to be much brighter, more detailed. You're going to be able to get the full dynamic range whenever you're watching your Netflix, 4K, your Amazon UHD, or even Hulu with the new 4K outputs on some of the different devices. Even with all that being said, I will tell you one thing about this television that's really impressive is that you can hit this menu button Go over here to the side, hit picture, and then you have full control, the backlights, the contrast, the brightness. And if you go down to the bottom, you can even hit advanced settings. And with this, you can control the white balance, the local dimming, tone mapping, local contrast, super resolution, skin tone. So you can take full control to get the best picture quality out of this television. Now let's talk about a little bit of gaming. All right, so now I put the TV in gaming mode. Let's check out the input lag to see how fast it responds. And keep in mind, anything below 30 seconds is pretty good. And it's getting 10.2 milliseconds, so it's pretty good, actually, for a television. All right, let's see what this TV can do for the Xbox. And I use this so I can go through all the settings. But if you look under the TV details, you can see that it will support 60 hertz. It won't support 120 hertz. And then it will support the 10-bit as well as HDR10 and Dolby Vision. If we go into the video mode, you can see everything's checked off except for the 50 hertz. So it's gonna be able to run just about everything that you want, including the variable refresh rate. Now, even though it's a 60 hertz panel, I'm gonna to try to override it on the 1440p. And you see there's a 120 hertz option. If it's not compatible, it will drop down to 1080p, and it did. So it will take in a 120 hertz 1080p signal, but keep in mind, this is a 60 hertz panel, so it may look smoother and it's gonna trick the console. So overall, the game experience actually is really good on this television. You talk about VRR, auto low latency, plus it has a low input lag. I'm not sure what more you can ask for, except for having a on-screen menu where you can actually set up everything like first person shooter and things like that. But it's not bad. <laughs> Thank you.
Now using this as a computer monitor looks pretty good. We have the screen over here, but one thing you can do is go into the settings. You can go down here to where it says picture and it actually has a PC mode. So you just go down here, go and press on it and it actually looks really good. And I pulled up one of my unboxing videos just to show you guys what it looks like. And you can see that it performs pretty decent as a editing monitor. So you can use it for that. You can use it for Photoshop or anything that you find necessary to use it for because it is supporting 60 frames per second. Now, one thing I do like about the Fire TV interface is extremely fast. You can see that it's very responsive. So as I press things, it's keeping up with my pace. And then at the top, you can see that you have your home, you have your input, you can find things, a live channel, which is actually a guide built in for the over the air TV. And it does have these applications that you can go and choose from. And these are some of the apps I installed in it and you can press and hold it down and you can move them around anywhere you want. So you can customize this for your experience. Besides the app store, I do like the fact that if you have Prime, you can listen to music and you can upload your photos and watch them right there as well as a internet browser. It also includes Luna, which is a cloud-based gaming system. All you need to do is just Bluetooth a PS5 or a Xbox controller to it, and you can start playing games without owning a console. And all the Fire TVs has this nice interface. You can go through here and set up your display and settings. It also has Apple AirPlay and Apple HomeKit, so you can hook it up and control it with Siri. You can do screen mirroring as well as screen savers. You can program it to your audio video receiver. You have a live TV tuner. And it does have a built-in TV guide, plus show you all the local channels that it found whenever you scanned with antenna. And when it comes to the internal memory, it does have up to 12 gigs of storage. Plus, you can format a USB drive and use it as a extra storage to put application on it as well. Next, we're gonna talk about audio. And I will tell you that this television has 10 watts by two. And after doing a demo on it, I would say that it sounds decent. However, I will tell you that the bass response is not as good as I would like it to be. So you can always get an external sound bar if you want better audio. But take a listen. Now, just in case you wonder about glare, let me show you what it looks like. So I will tell you that it doesn't necessarily have an anti-glare coating on it, but you can see the background there. So if you have a lit room, you're gonna be able to see some reflection in it, especially if you have a lamp or something behind you. Now I've been running the TV for an hour. Just wanna see how hot it gets whenever you leave it on so you can get an idea of the screen. So it looks like this one is reading about 87.4 degrees in temperature. Now with the TV in standby mode, it's gonna drain between 10 and 11 watts. And let's go ahead and turn it on and see how far this goes. So with the TV on, it looks like it jumps up to about 133 watts. So that gives you an idea of what kind of power that is really draining on the 58 inch model. After reviewing this television for the last few days, let me give you guys some insights. The first few things that I think has room for improvement is that it could have a pop-up for the gaming mode. I think the contrast could be a little bit better than what I see here, especially having local dimming. And I wish this TV also had the built-in microphone so you can talk to it directly since it is a fire television. Now, I would say you can press this button right here and you can pull up all your voice commands. And again, you can connect this to all your Alexa system and control it with remote control, which is great. Now, the great things that I do like about this television is that it's very responsive. It also has the VRR, the low latency, and it also has four HDMI inputs. It also, you can pass through Dolby Vision, and I will tell you that it has plenty of applications for the average user. Now, you have the Apple AirPlay, Apple HomeKit, so again, if you don't want to use the Amazon stuff, you can connect it to your iPhone or Apple ecosystem and control it as well. With last statement said, if you're looking for a bargain, try it out. I think you'll be satisfied as long as you have the right expectations. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace! Tech Steve.